Hello, and welcome to this week's OctaTrack tutorial. Um, this week I want to talk about the pickup machine. I just want to clear up some of the uh, questions you may have about it, because I've had a lot over the last few weeks um, here and there just about how it operates and why it's so different from everything else on the OctaTrack. Just using the pickup machine alone, if you understand it, um, can be extremely rewarding. So um, let's just dive right in. So if you understand recording normally, sampling on the uh, on the OctaTrack as it pertains to the Flex machines or pretty much every other type of machine, you'll know that in the record setup, you can set up sources 1, 2, and 3 to record from uh, A, B, C, D, or internal. So if I'm on track 5, which is a Flex machine, and I want to record from C, D, I hit source 2 here, and it'll record to, um, to that record buffer. On the other hand, with a pickup machine, you're actually recording through all three sources. Um, so if I have, you know, A, B, C, D, and internal set up, it's going to start looping from all three of those sources simultaneously. So um, I highly recommend if you're just starting out using the pickup machine, start with one source and preferably something that you can audition like a through machine. So right now I have my through machine set up on track seven. Um, my source is Q, so I can move that around as I please, but um, I have it set to uh, track 7 where my through machine is. Um, my OP1 is, is fed through a preamp and a reverb pedal. And then it's going to be sampled into the pickup machine. So the length of your uh, loop is determined by the R length in record setup 1. And uh, from that point on, I can basically... Um, tell it to, to loop that amount of time. So once I want to stop overdubbing, I just hit record two. If I want to stop the playback altogether, I press record two. If I want to start it again, I press record two again. You may notice some, uh, some interesting interaction between when I press the record buttons and when they actually um, react. And uh, that has to do with record setup page two. So basically I have this set up so that when I want to record, which is pressing record one, it's, it snaps to pattern length, which means it waits until the first step of the, uh, of the new pattern to start recording. And uh, that helps me time out what I'm recording um, you should do this to taste if you don't like quantizing your recordings. Um, if you're not working within the clock of the OctaTrack, um, you might want to set this to off or even set it to one so that it's basically the length of the 16th note. Um, but for now, I have it set to P length. And then for my Q play, which is basically how this button reacts, I have it set to uh, 16th notes. Um, the reason I have that is because if I set it to P length, it means that it'll start on the pattern exactly every single time. Um, but setting it to a 16th note gives me some opportunities to play with uh, the start point of the loop um, when it starts in the pattern uh, after I've already recorded. So let me demonstrate that. So you see with uh, certain rhythmic um, patterns, you might want to play with where you actually start it. Um, and you can create some new ideas just by doing that. Beyond the, uh, the basics of um, looping, now that we've covered that, there's some things you can do with your sample once you've um, played it back. And this is a good opportunity to demonstrate that you can actually play these without starting your sequencer at all. Um, So I can take the pitch down. It maintains the, uh, the timing as well.
you can of course uh, map these to LFOs and um, and scenes just like anything else. You can reverse it. Um, the sample can be reversed, but it'll start once the uh, the sequence has reached zero or sixteen. All right, so in order to understand the length multiplier, you have to understand the relationship between master and slave pickup machines. So basically, uh, what that means is the first pickup machine I play, um, based on the length that I have recorded, um, which is determined by setup page one, uh, here it's 16 steps. Uh, if I have this first one uh, playing, this becomes the master pickup machine. And that means every other pickup machine afterwards is a slave pickup machine. Um, and as such, it will record to an amount that is twice or four times or eight times as long as the original. You can also make it, um, you can turn it off, you can set the length to separate. Um, and what this means is if I set it to off, then um, it will just record to whatever R length I have set up. Um, but if I have it set to uh, times two, it will ignore anything that's written here if it's a slave pickup machine, and it'll just record to um, twice as much as whatever master I choose. So say I record a 16 step uh, sequence here. So you'll notice, you'll notice that I recorded 16 here, and this became 32. Oops, this became 32. Now let me stop these. Conversely, if I play this one first, you'll see the apostrophe above the P switches to this side, which means this is the master now. And if I record to this track, if I record something new, um, it'll start recording to uh, 32, I believe. There you go. Um, in cases like this, you do want to be careful, though, because I believe the maximum is 128, and uh, the Octatrack will start telling you that it's running out of um, RAM. So moving on from the length multiplier, um, we have gain. So gain is not traditionally um, what you would necessarily imagine it to be. It doesn't adjust the level of um, your input. It actually adjusts the level of each subsequent loop as it gets overdubbed. So if I record a single loop, the next time I hear that loop as it's played from the sampler, it'll actually go three to, you know, it'll either completely disappear or it'll start getting quieter and quieter um, as I record new loops. Um, if I don't touch this and set it to zero, I'll basically just hear notes building on top of each other. Um, there's something built into the way that the pickup machine operates that it won't cause any clipping or anything like that but um, nothing will disappear. So um, I'll demonstrate that. So you can still hear all parts in that section. Now if I set this to negative three and do something similar, let's see what happens.
Right. So you can sort of create this evolving pattern that um, eats itself and starts new things, and that can be really fun just on its own. All right, so the last setting on this page is uh, the, OP pa uh, the OP interaction. Um, I don't actually know what OP stands for. But um, basically what this does is it switches between overdub and gain. Overdub is what you'll usually use uh, as a loop pedal. Um, this is what you're traditionally used to, which means um, each time you record, something new is overdubbed. Um, gain is, uh, is something that I found out recently. It records um, a single loop, and then instead of overdubbing, it adjusts the level of your loop by this gain. Um, when you see the plus sign, normally you would say that this is overdubbing, but if it's set to gain, um, it's actually not overdubbing anything. It's just slowly fading out. And when you press stop instead of overdubbing, or instead of stopping the overdub, it just stops fading out. Um, so you can kind of use that to slowly uh, bring things into the background um, and then pause them where they are. Um, so let's demonstrate that real quick. So I stopped overdub real quick, but you'll hear it start to fade. If I want to keep it there, and it'll just stay at that level. Um, gain can also be set to uh, positive values, but I haven't yet experimented with that. And um, I encourage you to see uh, what that actually does. I, I'm just worried it's going to start getting really loud and start clipping. So uh, I've avoided it so far. All right, so um, the AMP page everyone should be par fairly familiar with. Um, but I think it's worth going into because um, it reveals a little bit about how the, um, the pickup machine treats samples. And uh, <coughs> and I think that's really important to um, understanding how the pickup machine works. So um, there have been a few times when I've been recording this that I got really confused because um, let's just set this to dub. All right. There have been times where I've been uh, playing with the pickup machine and um, all of a sudden I only hear a little bit of it. And that's because the ADSR still affects the pickup machine. So if I play this and I have my hold and release set differently, it'll still treat the pickup uh, sample as it does with um, a flex machine triggering a trig. Um, the only difference being that um, the sequencer is not in play here. Um, nothing is triggering on the one or anything like that. Um, and actually when you loop the track, I'm pretty sure what's happening is that it is, it, it is similar to telling the, um, Octatrack to set loop to on or something because it doesn't actually re trig at, at when you hit the one again. So the only time this comes into play is the first time you um, trigger the loop. So just remember, if you're not planning on playing with this creatively, remember to check this and set it to infinite. Especially if you're switching your pickup machine over from a flex machine, you may have some lingering settings here that really confuse you as to why certain things are happening. So that's about it for the uh, basic settings. Um, let's just do a quick um, overview of the setup so that we know exactly um, how to set up the pickup machine. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, source A, B, C, D, and Q um, are all active when you are looping. So um, try to simplify yours to one source unless you know you're trying to loop from multiple sources at the same time. Um, R length, as we mentioned before, determines the length of the master uh, track as well as um, uh, master pickup as well as any other pickups that have length set to off. Um, loop off. I don't actually know if this affects the, um, the track, it's the, the pickup machine. 
Um, setup two, uh, fade in and out. Um, it's the same thing with flex machines. Basically, it creates a small fade at the beginning and the end so that you don't have to worry about any errant pops or anything like that. Um, Q rec and Q uh, play we've already gone over. And uh, A, B, and C, D are kind of special, so I'll go over them real quick. Um, these settings are exclusive to the pickup machine. Um, and even if they show up in your flex machine, so if I have track five and I go to setup two, it's still there. But it doesn't actually do anything unless you have a pickup machine set up. And what it does is it basically uh, gives you a monitoring option for when you have a uh, pickup machine selected as one of your tracks. So um, even if I don't have uh, this through machine set up, Say I have um, this muted and I'm recording from uh, source CD like this. It'll take that source and it'll give me um, a direct. It'll give me a direct record into um, to into knowing what that sounds like. And this only applies if I have the track selected. I used to use this a lot, but um, I ended up choosing uh, monitoring over this. If I have a through machine set up here and I have my headphones on, um, I can actually just preview what's going through this through machine before it even gets recorded. So if I don't like it, I can always just re-record it. Um, and that's way better than being able to monitor um, the pickup machine like directly on the machine itself, because then you have to hear it every time you you um, select it. All right, so that's basically everything about the um, basic mechanics of how pickup machines operate. Um, I will go into some more detail about creative applications uh, next week. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.